Hey everyone, Matt St. John here from V Technologies and really appreciate everyone taking time to join today's My After Party uh, with Starship. Really game plan for today, going to do a brief overview of Starship and especially with that integration to Acumatica. So again, really high level overview. Um, if anyone feels that they would like to schedule a more one-on-one -on -one demo or discovery call so I can get a better understanding of your needs and your shipping requirements, I'm more than happy to do that. At the end, I'll put up my contact information. So please feel free to reach out to me. Okay. So with that being said, let, let's get going here, get this party started. Um, so real quick, a little bit about V Technologies. Uh, as you can see, we've uh, been developing integrated shipping solutions since 1987, so for 33 years now. Uh, here at V Technologies, this is all we do is integrated shipping solutions. So I'd like to say we really know what we're doing. Um, of course, we are a Acumatica certified application. Uh, we've been working with the Acumatica uh, software for uh, five years now. And within our community, we actually have uh, about 10,000 customers that are using our integrated shipping solutions. Uh, we are located in Connecticut. A uh, nice thing here is all of our sales, support, development, it all is done in-house. So we're not outsourcing anything. You call our support, you're going to get our team of guys here inside uh, the office. Little thing about the, with Starship and the Acumatica integration. Again, on the demo, we'll go through this, but uh, really plug and play. Uh, we can actually pull shipment, package, item detail. Um, so in that case, if I was inside Acumatica, I'm creating that shipment record, maybe going in there, defining my shipment. And what I can then do is go inside Starship, and Starship's going to pull in all that order, uh, line item detail, packaging detail, as I defined it inside of Acumatica. Uh, we can also, if we wanted to, just create a shipment record and then inside Starship actually do all the packaging. And that's what I'm going to focus on on today's uh, demo. We'll, we'll pull that route. And also, so you know, we can also pull by sales order numbers. So uh, maybe I just create a sales order number and I have that as a shipper. I can just work inside Starship. I can just bring in a sales order number. Starship, again, is going to bring in that order head or line item detail. Um, once I ship and process as a shipper, I'm going to receive all my shipping documents. And again, we'll show the show you all this in the demo. But what Starship's going to do behind the scenes, it's going to send back my tracking information, my pro numbers, my freight amounts. Um, that's going to go back into Acumatica. And if I'm using the sales order, Starship will automatically have Acumatica create that um, shipment record as well. Okay. As you see, multi-carrier, multi-mode. So again, with Starship as a shipper, I can just work inside the Starship program. Going to be able to rate shop. We have uh, integrations with over two dozen carriers, and that's parcel as well as LTL. So we're live rate shopping, returning your live negotiated contract rates. I can see published list rates. Um, we also support you know, any of those extra contract options that you have or maybe you know, carrier options. So for example, if you're doing international shipments with UPS and uh, you want to do the paperless invoicing where UPS sends out all the uh, international documents, Starship fully supports that. Of course, Starship can generate those documents and I'll show you that on the demo as well. Another nice feature of Starship is custom rules. So we can, you know, based off the ship via, it's going to come in. As you're going to see, Starship's automatically going to select the carrier service. We can automatically change it so it's third party or collect and have all the customer's account information bring, uh, be brought up. Uh, drop shipments, fully support drop shipments, where I can have it come in. Starship's automatically going to select uh, if we're doing like a blind shipment where it needs to show it's coming from someone else. Uh, we could automate that. Uh, freight rules, maybe you want to add a flat rate or a percentage, or maybe certain customers receive a discount on freight. Uh, fully able to handle those, uh, very easy. Uh, most of our clients, we show them how to do it, you know, kind of train the trainer, and they're up and running setting those up. Uh, printing logic, so with Starship, uh, all of our shipping documents, you can create unlimited templates. And of course, on each of those templates, you can also assign printing rules. So, hey, maybe again, I'm doing a drop shipment and I need a different company's logo on my packing slip. Starship, we can create that template. We can then assign a printing rule. So Starship would only generate that special packing list or that special document if it is for a certain customer or a certain type of shipment, okay? Um, anyone with uh, EDI needs, as you see, we, EDI integration, uh, 
Starship can print the GS128 labels, um, make that an easy ASM processing. I know a lot of times if someone's using uh, a built-in or add-on EDI solution, usually the workflow is, hey, uh, I've shipped my, my shipments, here's the shipment information, the front office then you know, uploads that to, say, the trading partner or goes through an EDI solution, and then that 128 label is returned. So then we got to go back to the warehouse and say, here you go, here's that label, good luck, go find you know, that skid or those boxes that need this label. Okay, it's nice. And again, Starship can generate that right at time of shipment. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, our support, world-class, uh, really everyone, every time I go to shows, um, that's all I hear is how great our, our um, support team is. And again, it's in-house, we're not outsourcing that. Um, again, we've been doing integrated shipping solutions, and that's all we do uh, for the last 33 years. So really understanding your ERP needs as well as your shipping needs. Uh, one of the new features we added with uh, Starship's integration to Acumatica is the ability to actually rate shop from sales order entry. So as on a snapshot here, as you see, we have that highlighted in the yellow, the Starship button. So as I'm creating an order, I can actually click that and it's going to then give me my rate shop screen. So here I can actually build my shipment, um, we'll get into this, but with Starship, we could have packaging scenarios set up. So, and it might be a little tough to see, but in this case, I have a, a laptop. Starship knows, hey, it's automatically going in a laptop box. So as a customer service rep, I can actually see this has already been packaged. So I know what kind of package this is going to go out in. And from there, you know, Transportation, again, that's just being mapped from the ship via, but I can manually change that. I can even do address validation. Starship does validate zip plus four, uh, so I can validate that ahead of time. But down below in this grid, there's my live rating. So I can see, the, again, those list prices, contract uh, charges um, for all the carriers that I have an actual module with. So UPS, FedEx, USPS, LTL carriers. Um, also on this screen is the applied charge. So in Starship terms, applied charges is either the published list rate or your contract rate, plus or minus any of those freight rules if you have them set up, okay? And of course, from here, I can sort by any of these columns. So here I just have it sorted by least expensive contract, my contract charge, so what I'm gonna be charged. And as you can see here, I can you know, select and make any changes. And of course, any changes I make on this screen, once I click the apply button, Starship will reverse translate and update that sales order as well. So maybe the address gets changed or I decide to go with a different carrier service, automatically can change that. And this is just a snapshot of some of those carriers that Starship does have integrations with. So again, with that carrier integration, gonna be able to do live rate shopping and I'll automatically pull in those live rates um, you know, that way tomorrow, say UPS ups a fuel surcharge. When you rate shop tomorrow, you would have access to those new rates. You know, we don't have to download anything. There's no staging tables. Again, it's a live connection. Um, fully support, of course, with like UPS, FedEx, you know, the tracking number, um, LTL carriers, most of them return a pro number. Uh, most of the other options for like say an LTL is maybe I want to use the carrier's generated bill rating form. We can do that. Or of course, with Starship, we also support VIX bill lading forms, um, a straight bill lading form. And again, they, those can be customized. So a lot of our customers, hey, when that form prints, it's already signed. It's already got the company name on it. Really, it's set up. So all they have to do is hand it to the driver. The driver signs it. That's it. They're done. And as you're going to see with Starship, name of the game here is to streamline your shipping process. So the less things as a shipper I have to click or manually type in or sign, the better. Okay, let's just bring in an order, let's ship it, let's get our documents, our labels, and move on to the next one. Okay. All right, so with that being said, let me uh, X out of here. We'll jump into the demo and I'll go on my demo machine here. So on my screen now, this is Starship. Uh, some of you have known Starship for a while now. This might be a little look, different look and feel, and of course it is. Uh, so this is actually our new web UI interface, so web user interface. Uh, so as you can see, a little different look and feel, uh, but new, improved. Uh, this is a great add-on. Uh, most of our new clients, this is what they're using. So um, this is really the future of Starship. And as you see, really looks just I'm on a website now. Um, so as a shipper, as I mentioned, I'm gonna just work inside Starship. I don't need access to Acumatica. 
And again, we can go by sales order, by shipment, or even if I needed to pull by a customer record, I could do that as well. Um, so up top here is our source document. I could actually, if I have, say, a PIP sheet barcoded uh, with Starship, just use a regular wedge type plug and play barcode scanner, and I can even scan in that shipment number. If I wanted to, I could apply filters. You know, maybe I wanted to narrow it down by customer or shipment date, uh, so on and so forth. So add different types of filters. Of course, I could sort by any of these columns as well. Um, I can then either click the checkbox here and click create shipment, or simply in this case, if we want to ship this one order one four two one, I can just slide over here to the right hand side, and I'm going to just click create shipment. So really what Starship now is doing, it's looking inside Acumatica and we're gonna bring in all the order header, line item detail, or in this case, I should say shipment. Uh, because again, if I was building this shipment first inside of Acumatica, however I packaged everything, that's how it would come into Starship. Uh, again, this other rate, um, I haven't built it. I just created the shipment record. So Starship's looking at that and here's all our source information. So it's gonna tell me my shipment. Here's the sales order, I have one order. The sender information, of course, that's just grabbing it and pulling it in from Acumatica. As I mentioned, hey, if we're doing blind or drop shipments, I could set this up. As you see, we have a database and I could have it automatically. You know, maybe it needs to have show this company's information. So I could either manually select that or again, I could have Starship look at a maybe an attribute field or some other field inside of Acumatica to automatically trigger this. So it's simple data mapping of fields. You know, if you wanted to make a change, you don't have to wait for us to do custom program. Again, the way we design the software, very simple, simple integration, no custom program. I can just data map and tell Starship, hey, I want you to look at this Acumatica field. You see data, automatically bring it in. Okay. So there's the recipient information. Again, uh, address validation, zip plus four, automatically gonna take care of that. Um, this one, of course, has been validated, but if it was incorrect, I could have a screen pop up that tells my shipper, hey, you know, this is an invalid address. You should use this one and they can simply make the change. Just click OK and it would update that record. Transportation. So, again, just looking at a ship via. So, in this case, hey, I know this is international. Uh, my system, this ship via is actually just UPS ground. Uh, so, as you can see, we can also default an international carrier service. Uh, so, in this case, you know, Starship knows, oh, it's UPS ground, but wait, it's going, it's an international shipment. So let me automatically select UPS standard to Canada. Okay. Or of course you could have a ship via called UPS standard or to Canada or UPS international expedited. Um, up to you, uh, different ways we can handle that automation of the carrier service. Even the billing account, anyone doing third party or collect shipments, you know, I can come in here and I could have Starship, again, reading that ship via, automatically know, oh, this is a third party. And as you see here, it's automatically already selected in this little drop down, my US bartending database. And this is just part of Starship's database where I can set up, here's my third party customer account info. And then I can even set up different account numbers. So maybe, you know, they have a UPS and a FedEx one. Um, so that way, again, as a shipper, I don't have to worry about touching anything. Starship knows, yep, this is third party. I see that it's the, uh, for USA bartending, I'm automatically going to select them. And then, of course, based on carrier, it would populate the correct carrier account number. Okay. So I'm just going to switch this back to prepaid. And we'll minimize this transportation tab. Uh, shipment details, these are really all our shipment options. Uh, so of course, if I had say the insurance flag checked inside Acumatica, this would come in and insurance would be flagged. And again, this base amount, all these declared values, I have customers that that's all automated, that it comes in, the clear value is already calculated, it's already populated. Um, here's that paperless invoicing. If I want UPS in this case to send out international data or the forms, I could do that. Quantum view, a lot of clients of ours have this. It's always defaulted. So these fields, I can also default. So it comes in, this would already be selected. We can pull in email addresses uh, from inside Acumatica. And then what a lot of our clients will do is they just default to use the carrier generated email if there was a delay and an exception. And I'll talk a little bit more on that in a little bit. 
All right, so there's all my shipment options. As you see, we have some user-defined fields. So with Starship, we have as these user-defined fields. They could be on the shipment level, line level, order level, package level. So if you have additional information that you want us to bring in, again, simple data map, we can just look and say, okay, look at this Acumatica field and automatically you know, put that in my shipment field one, for example. Or if I wanted to, I could rename these fields. Right. So a lot of flexibility, very easy to change those data mappings. Uh, shipment status, you know, this is basic the, the shipment. Hey, it's open, it's going to be ready. This was an LTL shipment. You know, I could also change the ready date. Uh, even on this one, I can. Maybe I don't want UPS to pick this one up today. Um, but a lot of LTL uh, companies that ship LTL, you know, a lot of times they say, oh, I can't, you know, my first order, I can't have Starship automatically tell the carrier I have something ready to go because they're right down the street and they'll be here within an hour. So with an LTL shipment, we can change the date, we can change the times, really customizing it. Um, so when you're ready to have that carrier come and pick up that shipment, they'll be there. All right. Now, packaging view, I'm just going to drill down in here. So I'm going to mention again, if I did this inside of the shipment record in Acumatica, it would automatically come in. Uh, but in this case, I just left that shipment record blank. Uh, so what thing, one thing that's happening here is, as you see this laptop, hey, it's already in a box for me. Um, so with Starship, we can set up or it can be set up to automatically learn packaging scenarios. In this case, Starship knows uh, oh, that laptop. I know every time they ship it, it goes into a package that they have called Acer laptop. Um, packaging scenario is great. It, currently, it is one item, one box. So really works wonders with case packs because I can also tell Starship, you know, hey, only two laptops fit in this laptop box. That way, if the order was for four, say, I would actually have this order come in and there would be um, two laptop boxes with, of course, two of the computers in each of the boxes. Okay. Now, my system, the remaining items, no packaging scenario. So everything's just dropping into Starship's true default package, which is custom packaging. Uh, you could have a set default package, uh, but this is really just part of Starship's database. If I click on this drop down, or as you see, I can set up and assign custom packages, and that could be boxes, bags, bales, pallets, envelopes, what have you. But the nice thing with using a custom package, you know, maybe I know this fits in a medium box, um, Starship will automatically populate the dimensions over here, or if I left this as custom, I could mainly type in dimensions. And if I wanted to move items around, now with Starship, item to box detail is not required, but if I wanted to, you know, maybe in this case, I know I could fit those uh, Legos in that Acer laptop box. So it's simple drag and drop, okay? Quantity, if I allow my shipper to change units being shipped, I can do that. Um, actual weight, now my system, I'm just pulling weights from inside of Acumatica. If I had a scale, I could put a box on a scale and you know, mainly type in the weight, or I can even have an integrated scale where Starship would automatically bring in the weight. Right? So there's my actual weight. Now, the nice thing with Starship, here's my dimensions, and then here's my bill weight. So this is the actual dimensional weight, in this case, according to UPS's calculations. So when we send this out, when we actually ship and process this, this is gonna go out to UPS at the true dim weight, so the 22 pounds in this case, not 14.41. So later on, you're not going to get that bill from UPS that says, oh, you know, you sent this out at 14.41, which they might have a problem with anyways, but um, it's, it was, you know, it's supposed to be 22 pounds. Here's the difference. Starship's going to take care of all that for you. All right. So again, item to box detail. Um, we also have a packaging assistant wizard where if you prefer, I can have my items come in over here, my box is on the right hand side, and I can add and drag drop, move my items around uh, just like I did in that other screen. Okay, so it's two different options there. It really comes down to what your carrier or your shipper prefers. Uh, next bit I'll show you is the line item detail. So here I'm going to drill down. And with Starship, one of the nice things is we have our own database where we'll start storing your inventory items. Now, my system, item, unit measure, description, again, weights, all that information is coming from inside of Acumatica. Now, the reason we add our own database for your inventory items and actually start storing them automatically is, for example, in this shipment, international data. If you don't have this living inside Acumatica, it could be stored inside Starship. So here's the country of manufacturer. Schedule B or harmonized code. You know, maybe that was missing. I can quickly come here. I can look up by code. 
You know, I can even add filters. Maybe I want to look up by a code or by description. But here's all the different codes. And then, of course, I could just select one. And once this information's in here, once I add it, Starship will, again, automatically remember that. So next time, I don't have to manually come in here and do that. Okay? You know, do I need a certificate of origin? What type? All that is just set up right here. So I'm going to minimize that. You know, same thing with uh, if you're doing LTL and you need those NMFC codes, freight class, all that can be stored inside of Starship. Now, rate quote. So down here, there's my live rates that I have with, in this case, FedEx, UPS, as well as, oops, actually USPS isn't on there, but um, again, all the carriers that we have, you would be able to see those different rates. And again, here's my published list rate. Here's my live negotiated contract rate. And then the applied charge, which is that plus or minus any freight rules is right there. So you know, a lot of our clients, hey, we just sort by the applied charge and shipper comes in if they need to manually change, they can just come over and quickly select the least expensive. Or with Starship, we could have Starship automatically rate shop your shipments. And we could do rules. Maybe we want to tell Starship, hey, you know what? You automatically rate shop each of my shipments, and I want you to always select the least expensive carrier service. Or maybe least expensive, least amount of delivery days. Okay? So that could be automated. Uh, total charge is just a breakdown of the charges. So again, if I wanted to see if I had any freight rules, I could click here. And it looks like we do have one. And this one's just a flat rate. Hey, on every shipment, add $3. But again, they could be min maxes. They could be flat rates. Um, it could be a percentage. Again, we can look at, hey, by certain customers, uh, maybe you're going to do a special promo code. We can pull in a promo code. Um, you know, I just had worked with a customer that we did it by where the state it was going to and a different percentage markup but really all the way down to line item details. So we can even say anytime, uh, maybe you have a fragile item. So anytime that's on a, a shipment, I want you to add a flat rate of $5 because we have to use additional bubble wrap or packaging material. Let's help cover that cost. Right. Okay, so I drag this out, kind of showing you all the different options, but really we're gonna bring this in again, maybe do some item box, rate shopping, but when we're ready to ship and process, we can of course click this ship and process button or under this drop down, I can save a shipment. Maybe I'm staging it. I can do a sh full shipping process. As you see, we also have shortcut keys. Or maybe you need a return label at the same time. We can also do uh, ship and create return label. So I'm just going to click the ship and process button. Oops. Interesting. Oh, uh, I'm, my apologies. I did forget to change this back to my main address. And let's do that one more time. So it looks like I just I hadn't finished setting up that sender information. So that sender information wasn't tied to a correct prepaid, uh, my prepaid bill account. So, all right. So again, once your shipper clicks ship and process, process in a live environment, what's going to happen is their documents are automatically going to print out. For the sake of the webinar and this demo, I'm just going to preview them. So I'm also using our smart label. And as you can see, a smart label will generate a packing list and a shipping uh, label together. Uh, so this usually goes to a laser printer, but most certainly we can send that shipping label to a thermal printer or printers. So a lot of clients, hey, my UPS and FedEx labels are different sizes. I need them to go to different thermal printers. No problem. We can handle that. Packing list. Um, you do have the option with Starship that can also go to a thermal printer. Or of course, if you wanted, we can send it to a laser printer. And as I mentioned, again, our documents can be customized. So here's my company logo. I can apply a rule to tell Starship the only, you know, this is the only one, the one, one time I want you to generate this shipment. So you do have those options. So box one, box two. And again, this was a commercial, um, an international shipment. So here's my commercial invoice. Order head or line item detail automatically going to fill out. And then if I wanted to, I could customize it. So the date and the signature is already there. And then also, hey, I need a certificate of origin on this one. Starship knows, automatically generated it. Same thing, I could have all these fields down below already populated, so this prints out as a shipper, I don't have to do anything, all right? Okay, so again, once we ship and process as a shipper, automatically gonna take me back to that main screen where I can just you know, put in my next shipment number, rinse, repeat, go through that whole cycle again, all right? And I'll just jump back into Acumatica, and I'm just gonna refresh this. Oh, of course I logged out here. Log back in, and 
second. Yeah. Send my way. All right, let me just log back in here. Of course, they changed the setup. Bear with me one second. Okay. Oops. Sorry about that. Don't actually have the new password here, so let's just manually type that in. And. Okay, and we'll update that, apologize about that. Okay, so back in the shipment record inside Acumatica, uh, here's that shipment, 1421 we just selected, or just shipped, so as you see now it's confirmed. Uh, with Starship right back, we even can set it up to write back a note. Um, so in this case, I have it writing back a note. And I'm just gonna go, first of all, shipping setting. So here's my shipping, so freight price, that's what I charged the customer if i wanted to i can also write back my contract charge into the freight cost field now some kind of clients don't want to do that um, but uh, just know we can send back your freight cost and then again this is the freight price so that's what you're charging the customer so you can take a look and actually compare them make sure you're not losing money and on the packaging box id as you saw on that shipment, I selected, well, Starship automatically put one item in an Acer laptop. I put that other item in a medium box. As you see, we reverse translate the box ID. There's the quantities in each of the packages. Here's our tracking numbers, customer reference one and two. If you wanted to, you could also send back additional information into these fields. Um, again, as I mentioned, status is confirmed. And also on the notes tab, uh, up to you what you want to write back here as you see i just have mine um, shipped on the date my time it's rounding up so i just had it at three o'clock but putting back the weight and package one package two also giving the tracking number but again up, up to you what you want to send back there okay so really that that's the workflow um, of starship and really quick, what I'll do is just jump into some of those additional added features that are included with starship uh, as I mentioned that rate quote from sales order entry that's included with Starship, no additional fees. It does not take up any user seats for Starship, so you don't have to purchase any additional licenses to use that. Um, here's our e-notify program. So this is why my system was set up and a lot of our customers do the same thing. Hey, I don't want even wanna use a carrier generated email, or if I do, I only wanna use them if it's an exception or a delay. Because as you see, e-notify, you can design, develop your own custom email templates, um, you know, let your customer know, here's your packages, this is when you're expecting it, that's coming from the carrier, so that's accurate. Item to box detail, hyperlink tracking numbers that take the customer right back to the carrier's website. Um, with these, just like the printing documents, unlimited templates, and instead of printing rules, you can actually get into and set up emailing rules. So here I have a promo code, which I hyperlink, get my customer right back to my website, but maybe I only want this promo code to go to certain customers. So we can most certainly set up those rules. And again, those certain templates would only go to those special customers. All right. um, also is our dashboard program. So I'm just gonna inside here, inside the Starship, drill into dashboard. Uh, but we also have this as a standalone. Again, it's included, uh, does not require any additional seats or licenses, just like eNotify, just like the dashboard program or the rate shop program. Uh, here we've added a heat map, so maybe you want to see where all your hot spots, where all your shipments are going, uh, but I'll just go to an overview view. So with dashboard, as you see, matrix, reports, uh, usually all our clients, everyone in the front office has dashboard, and they come in here and they can track, they can look up shipments, you know, we can get a detail on, hey, how many days it's been in transit, um, you know, canned reports through dashboard, late delivery, uh, co charge comparison reports. You know, if you want to see, make sure you're not losing money. We have a quick report that you can run uh, that would show you, you know, the plus or minus on all your shipments. Okay. Uh, so again, a brief overview, kind of went through that rather quickly, but uh, if anyone, of course, would like to uh, schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo with me, um, I'm going to put up my contact information here. Uh, please feel free to reach out more than happy to do a demo discovery call you know find out what you're looking to get out of an integrated sh uh, shipping solution like starship again everyone i really appreciate you joining uh, my call today and hope you found it informative and like i said please feel free to reach out to me so thanks again and i hope everyone has a good day